Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV and welcome to my messy and patchy bookshelf behind me. I have a lot of my books distributed between this shelf and then like four other shelves. My life is a little bit chaotic right now. Anyway, today I wanted to do a part three video of the Christmas songbook series that I started a couple weeks ago. And I encourage you to go back and listen to those ones and, and watch them. But this one isn't so much of a direct continuation of those two. This one is just kind of like a like a side thread. So if you didn't watch those videos, it's fine. This, this video, you're not going to be totally lost. But if you are interested in learning how to play with chords, whether or not that's with Christmas music or not, then uh, Keep watching. So today what we're going to talk about is how to play piano when other people are singing along. This could be like an informal setting where you're the one playing piano and you have a group of friends or family members who are singing Christmas music to the music that you're playing. Or this could also apply to being the piano player in a church congregation setting, etc. The biggest challenge with play music with other people singing along is it doesn't give you a whole lot of room for error because if you make a mistake and you flub a note, everyone else is going to keep singing or their singing, even worse, is going to just fall off the rails because they won't be able to, you know, keep it going or keep the beats uh, without you as the piano player to kind of glue everyone together. So that's, I think a lot of people who um, would be able to play for friends and family in an informal setting some Christmas music are afraid to do so because there's this idea that you have to really master the pieces and you have to um, get really, really, really good before you can do that because unless you're really, really good, you're going to make mistakes and then people won't be able to follow you. But I think this is a, a flawed line of thinking and I think even people in the earlier stages of playing piano can play for other people singing along. The main thing that it requires is ability, an ability to carry on no matter what, and also an ability to improvise a little bit. Because if you make mistakes, you need to be able to improvise with those mistakes. You need to be able to, um, you know, just kind of go with it. It's like, okay, apparently I'm hitting some wrong notes, and so now I'm just gonna, you know, fudge my way through this until we get to another point where I can start playing better again. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit in today's video. We're going to hop over on the piano. I'll show you a couple of the things that I like to keep in mind when I'm playing for friends and family. I don't really, I, I talked about this in one of the previous videos, but I don't really practice Christmas music the way I practice regular music. Um, I might like sight read through a whole bunch of music, but I don't, you know, usually sit down and spend like a couple hours on a piece in order for everyone else to be able to sing along. Um, I usually just uh, use my knowledge of chords and improvisation skills and uh, just kind of wing it on the spot. So let's talk about that and hop to the piano. All right, so I have some Christmas music in front of me and we're just gonna talk through the experience of playing a piece of music while other people are trying to sing. And I flipped to a random page in my book, but it ended up being kind of perfect because it turned to Let It Snow. And Let It Snow is a challenging piece of music to play when other people are following along because it's really fast, uh, there's a lot of chord changes, it's pretty um, contemporary in flavor. So I haven't even practiced it at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm working from an immediate disadvantage. Many of you who are playing for friends and family will have practiced in advance. So if I was to just kind of open and sight read this and have other people sing along, the most important thing is I, I mentioned this already, but being able to improvise is key, but possibly even more of a key is to just be able to play the melody no matter what. So if all else fails, if all your if all your harmony notes disappear, if your like left hand totally disappears, the important part is to be able to maintain that melody. So you might find you get lost sometimes. So I just was kind of noodling through it, but the thing that I tried to do no matter what was keep that melody happening regardless of whatever else falls apart. So the best thing you could do is if you learned your Christmas music as you learn a traditional, you know, like say a Beethoven piece or something like that, I encourage you to deconstruct it a little bit and learn the melody only. Learn how to play this part, maybe even, but the fire is so delightful, but learn how to sing along with it a little bit. Because if you can play it with all the flourishes, the full left hand, 
that's kind of what my that's kind of the left hand pattern that that's going on but even if all of that falls apart you can still default to being able to play the melody then uh, you're doing pretty good that's the that's the part that people are going to be following and ideally if things fall apart you start playing things are going to fall apart so i'm just going to start playing and then when it does we'll talk about it So you notice things kind of fell apart for me a little bit. Um, I lost the melody for a split second, I, and then I was like, oh, okay, I'm losing it. It's falling apart. I got to jump back on that melody. So what I did is I, I just omitted pretty much all the left hand and just focused on getting my tune back. And I, I kind of just made something up in the left hand. <laughs> that wasn't quite right, but that's okay. The, the main thing was just keeping that melody continuing no matter what. Uh, yeah, so th that would be my biggest suggestion to you. And this also connects with the ability to improvise. So it helps to be able to read the, if you can sight read all of the notes on the right and the left hand simultaneously at this speed, um, then that's fabulous power to you. If you cannot sight read at that speed, and sometimes uh, you find that you're losing your place or it's getting all messed up, the easiest thing is to look at the chord symbols if you have them. So my music up top has F, C, F. So if I'm getting lost, um, what I actually did in the, in the part that I did get lost, uh, delightful. Uh, in this part right here, since I made a mistake, I just started looking at the chord symbols. I ignored the left end. Uh, and that's how I got back on track. I just looked at the chord symbol, played a single bass note, so it says G minor, and I just played a G. Kept it really, really easy. And if you're doing Let It Snow for friends and family, and you do the full, you know, four minute whatever version, then what you might find is as you do successive repeats, the parts that you were falling apart, it, you practice, right? Certain parts that were tough start getting a little bit easier. This is really good for some, you know, some Christmas songs have like, six verses <laughs> so those are the ones that by the sixth verse you're you're going to be able to um you know maybe add more harmony notes do more of like the left hand fills and it'll be fancier sounding but um, allow yourself to pare down a piece as much as possible when you're when you're reading through it um, and that means what i mean in, in real life is by being able to play the melody without anything else and then being able to default to only the melody when people are singing along um, and then being able to improvise. So if things fall apart, you can uh, jump in with a simplified version of the left hand. You can get rid of some of the extra notes, some of the, maybe there's right hand harmony notes you can just kind of delete on the fly. Um, that's how you're gonna be able to play with friends and family. Now let's see if anything comes up. I'm gonna make fool myself some more and sight read into the second page. fudged a few notes in there. There was one part, I can't remember exactly where it was, where I hit a wrong melody note, but I kind of circled back and, and corrected it. Um, I did something kind of weird like that. So I hit the wrong melody note, but I, instead of freaking out, it's stopping. <laughs> I was like, okay, I hit the wrong note. Let's find the right note, which is G in this particular instance. Um, so that's again, uh, the ability to improvise as you go along um, and being able to maintain the beat even when everything's falling apart. So even though I made some mistakes through that, and again, I, I want to stress that I picked a piece that I have not practiced. It's fast. It's kind of a challenge to sight read. Uh, so you could see me make mistakes in real time and then kind of bounce back from them. Uh, you, you just it, you just have to keep the momentum going. And hopefully this has been somewhat helpful. <laughs> it's been somewhat embarrassing on my part. So um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. And that's uh, pretty much all I have to share with you guys today. Thank you for watching today's video. And I appreciate the uh, handful of you who took the time to send me an email uh, 
giving further suggestions for um, this series and keep it coming. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I'll do more, but maybe I'll do more if the interest is there. So um, and again, these are concepts that apply not just to Christmas music specifically, but that's just the context we're talking about them today. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. I feel like it's just hanging up. <laughs> I feel like I was just on a very formal phone call or something like that.